Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we are continuing to look at the January 2022 Principles of Business Paper 2. So that's a January 2022 POB Paper 2. And you know what to do before we continue, just like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when Learn SKN drops another video or when we drop number five or some Econ Pass paper, whatever. Just hit the bell, like the video. And we will from there. All right. So we would have completed number one, two, and three, and so they're up on the channel. So make sure you look at that. So now we're looking at number four on this paper. And number four A says define each of the following terms: logistics and supply chain operations. That's two marks each. And as we all know, logistics is the newest thing in the syllabus, and so they're really, really testing this one a lot. So you have to be a little familiar with that one. So logistics. Now we have multiple definitions for logistics some complex some simple so uh, let's look at the two from from the textbooks and so you see which one is more uh, um, comfortable for you so from one of the textbooks we have logistics being defined as the coordination and organization of complex operations the coordination and organization of complex operations so logistics is a coordination and organization of complex operations typically it involves getting hold of resources and then planning a sequence of well-structured steps to organize delivery to where those resources ne are needed. So it's the coordination and organization of complex operations to ensure that resources get to where they need to be in the right time, in essence. So similar to what that has, the other textbook has logistics as a little bit more of a mouthful logistics is a process of organizing the movement of these of goods from one part of the supply chain to another simply enough logistics is a process, process of organizing the movement of goods from one part of the supply chain to another to ensure they are available for production when they are needed so that the product reaches the customer in the right place at the right time so the main idea here is that logistics is all about the organizing or organization of complex operations complex movement when you think about fedex when you think about ups and those um freight forwarders think about amazon and the warehouse all those complex operations they have to put into play to get the products where they need to go so that's logistics in a nutshell then they say supply chain operations a very simple definition for this one supply chain operations the the management of the flow of goods and services from one part of the supply chain to another right so the management of the flow of, of goods and services from one part of the supply chain to another so if you look at the textbook it says here the term supply chain operations refers to the management of the flow of goods and services uh goods and services need to flow from one particular point a to the end customer point b right so the entire chain is called supply chain so it's about getting the goods from the producer to the consumer supply chain operations so it's the management of the flow of goods and services from one point of the supply chain to the next from the producer to the consumer however you want to put it but that's the gist of the supply chain operations so easy like that you would have gotten your four max then we ask this question here state two differences between bill of lading and eaw bill and so these are documents for trade trade documents trade um conducting business these kind of documents and so we know that the bill of lading normally deals with ocean freight and the eaw bill normally deals with air freight right so that's one difference right there but there are other differences that we're going to you know, look at quickly so if we look here in our textbook we see examples of the bill of lading and the eaw bill so a bill of lading is a legally binding document traditionally used when goods are traded and so it have three functions three main functions such as it is a document of title ownership of the goods described so they're saying whoever possessed the bill of lading then you are the owner of those goods right it acts as a title document it shows that you are the owner of uh, of those goods so normally that's it. that is why when you go to the, the 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 customs you have to pay to get permission you have to get pay to get ownership of the bill of lading or else it belongs to the the shipper but that's one key difference right there because the bill of lading 
acts as a, as, a, as a title of ownership, but the area bill does not. However, a document title, however, it is not, however, a document title like the Bill of Lading. So, if I have an area bill, that doesn't mean I claim possession of these goods. So, the, the, the whoever is in charge of the, the plane, the, the, the airline freight, they are not really the owners. So, they cannot, it's not a title document. So, those are the two differences right there. Bill of Laden, normally for shipping um, cargo by sea. The airway bill, normally for cargo by air. Uh, the Bill of Laden can be used as a title deed, to show, a title to show ownership of the, 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 um, of the goods. The airway bill cannot. It is not used to show ownership. You cannot get the airway bill and say, I own these. So, those are the two key distinctions between those two uh trade transportation documents right so that's that's the you outline those two and you get your full marks for that good moving right along outline three roles of transportation in the marketing of goods outline three roles of transportation in the marketing of goods so if you're looking at it from a marketing perspective remember the four p's of marketing right the product the price promotion and place right so those are the four pieces of marketing and you can see how transportation can be inserted into a few of these p's for example price now price is the cost at which you sell the product for and if your transportation if your transportation is one that is very efficient very cost effective then that means you're getting products at a cheaper rate that are of a good quality and so you can factor that into your marketing because that means that the ultimate price of the product doesn't have to be as high as the competitors if you have an efficient effective transportation system so that can impact price look at this one here here what i say here impact on sales fast efficient safe reliable and cost effective transportation helps increase total sales of the product here what i say fast efficient safe reliable and cost effective transportation helps to increase total sales of a product and the profit reputation improves and products are on time so when people know that you are a business so that's that's so, so apart from the, from the price time reliability right when people know that you are a business that when i go to your your establishment you got this stuff because they arrive on time you can actually put that in your marketing right because you know that the product that you want is always available because your system, your, trans your transportation system allows it to be always there on time. So you can market it, you can do marketing based on that alone. Your product is always in stock, always available, always reach reaches on time. As I said before, cost effective. Your product is cheaper because your transportation is cheaper. And as such, you can pass that on to your customers to give them a cheaper product. So right there, for your, for your price in the marketing mix, you can be more competitive than your rivals reliability we're talking about getting quality products at a cheaper rate so they, are e they stand up easier so you can market that your product is more reliable because of the efficiency in your mag in your transportation system effective sourcing of materials some materials and parts from the some materials and parts from the best and most competitive suppliers may be located far away an effective transport system can move these inputs quickly and in a cost-effective manner. So you can promote based on the quality because you know it's going to be available in a timely manner as a, in a cost-effective way for you. Then we have here security of supply. An effective transport network creates security of supply to business when supplies can arrive safely and on time. So imagine that you are talking to somebody, you're, 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 you're doing business with people, and then they're saying here, okay, I want to get this at a certain time. You can actually market yourself as such, that you are someone who can get them to you when you want them in a safe manner. So you can see how transportation can be inserted into your overall marketing, your promotion, you know, cost effective, timely, reliable, safe so you can promote all into your products we have a safe product 
we have a reasonably priced product our product can be in stores in a timely manner so you can just go crazy with whatever marketing um campaign you want to push based on your efficient reliable cost effective and timely transport system so you can see how all that can factor into your marketing mix and so if you, you this is six marks for this question so it's two marks each so you want to pull them out so you want to say um price how it affects your price in marketing because because you get them at a cheaper rate you can pass on that savings to your customers that's price you can say that your product is of a certain quality because you got them from a good source at a reasonable rate you can always say your product is reliable you can get them in a timely manner so you can outline that in your marketing say so you can get them on time so that means that you're always you always have them in stock and so you're more reliable as a supplier so you can outline any one of those the cost effective nature of it the timely nature of it the reliability of it or the safety aspect of your product because you know where you source them from okay now next one the last question for this section explain two problems an agricultural firm may face when distributing bananas from the Caribbean to the US and so if you look at our textbook we have a whole section dedicated to distribution risk problems and mitigation so potential <coughs> distribution problems so we are looking at agricultural products from the Caribbean to the US so obviously one problem could be and I mean today we are facing it today in 2022 it started in 2021 now 2022 we have the supply chain issue a lot of products are reaching their final destination later than usual so we we actually seeing the problem right now so you can actually write about this question right now delay shipment this occurs when planned shipment of goods does not do, does not arrive on time so imagine you plan to send you put bananas to america but for whatever reason you can't find a, uh, a boat you can't find containers or uh, whatever so there are delays weather can cause delays anything can cause delays so delay shipment can be a major issue that's a problem right there of course it's perishable goods so spoilage of goods is a major concern imagine you send your your bananas from the caribbean let's say again you, you, you're coming from the windward islands and say it might take some time to reach up to america whether if you choose a uh, sea freight that might be a problem take a, a bit longer the farmer might have harvested them a little too late so you know they're already ripening on the sea or you know bananas you have the you know bananas can cause ripening with ethylene gas they can cause ripening right there so that's why you don't really put ripe bananas close to other fruits that are not ripe because they, they cause them to rip faster but that's agricultural science so spoilage of goods right so we're saying that goods can be spoiled going across the ocean even across the air a number of reasons you know one might have a bruise and so they're infected you might be like i said have said too early too late and so they, they spoil before they reach things like that but spoilage of goods is an issue as it relates to shipping then we have of course weather weather can be a major problem because weather can cause delays weather can cause destruction those kind of things caribbean to america ocean might be rough you have issues problems right so that's the next problem right there misdirection of goods they might send the goods to the wrong port right the wrong location due to poor communication or whatever reason whatever human error you might send the goods to the wrong port the wrong area so that's a misdirection of goods inadequate warehousing facilities right so perhaps they ask for let's say america asks for um, a ton of bananas but because in the caribbean we don't have such capacity we only we are only able to ship a half a ton so inadequate warehousing can cause problems right and then we have lack of proper security measures for example if you touch down this stuff in america people steal them you put them in a warehouse in in um, the caribbean people steal them so you you're supposed to ship ten thousand boxes you end up shipping maybe nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine you know something like that so those are some issues and uh, let me see the question is how many max here outline two six max so you can go to town on any of them especially things like spoilage things like delays things like weather things like stealing so you can choose all of those and go to town on them they're just putting in random things 
but all of my problems apply to anything you're shipping. Anything can spoil, especially perishables. Anything can be delayed. Anything can be stolen. So just use these examples right here from a textbook. You have all of them right there. Problems, delayed shipment. You have a whole table here with them. Delayed shipment, spoilage. I didn't really go into the industrial analyst, but those are also other options. Misdirection, ineffective communication. So all of those are options you can use to answer that question, right? Good. So that's it for number four for the May-June 2022 POB Paper 2. All right. So stay tuned for more past people questions. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.